either way hey let's go uh to the v v mix line and bring in uh greg allman who covers the bucks and nfc south for fox sports you can follow him on x or twitter whatever you call it at greg gallman greg thanks so much for the time here in detroit how are you thanks greg doing fine guys hope you're doing well thanks for having me absolutely well let's talk first talk about this bucks team greg how are they three and one uh, not too many people expected this from the bucks uh whether it was you know uh baker mayfield winning the job in the off season or what but how are the bucks three and one yeah i think they've exceeded expectations for sure and i know that many expected them to be on top of this division in the post tom brady era but no they've they're tied to the nfl lead in turnover margin uh, they've played good defense you know, probably won a game people didn't expect them to win. The first week at Minnesota uh, beat a good Saints team in their last game. And, I mean, this Detroit team, obviously they played the Eagles. They lost to the Eagles. But I think this is the real measuring stick for the chance for, for them to validate their success at a level that they haven't had so far. Greg, appreciate having you on the show. I had the uh, the privilege of attending camp in New York and Florham, and I was there for the scrimmage between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New York Jets. And at that particular time, it wasn't sure if Baker Mayfield was even going to be starting quarterback, would have been Kyle Trask, and they just did not seem to be hitting on any, not all, any cylinders. What changed from that practice, which was August, blah, 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 I can't remember the date. What changed from that practice to the season and now? Because just seemed, they just seem to be a completely different team than they were that day that I watched practice. Yeah, Baker's kind of done all the right things. You know, here's a guy that had all kinds of questions with interceptions, with turnovers, um, has kept those in check, has played well. I think he's the number one quarterback in the NFL on third down so far after five games, five weeks. Um, so, no, I think their defense has come up with takeaways at the right time, and their offense has limited their mistakes. They're still not, uh, you know, a finished product at all. They don't no. run the ball well. Um, you know, there's, there's things they need to get better on. But for them to be three and one, that, that probably – Again, aside from the people in that building, I think they, they didn't have many people that expected them to be where they are right now. Hey, Greg, I've noticed a, a difference uh, from afar uh, about Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles is a very quiet guy. When he's with in New York, uh, I think he was over his head there with the Jet fans, wanted to kill him every other week. Uh, he gets another chance here now. Uh, and I think, he, is he a different guy? Is he more relaxed? What is your thoughts on Todd Bowles? I do think so. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, New York wasn't a good experience for him. You know, was a coordinator on their Super Bowl championship team here in 2020. Um, you know, his first year as a head coach wasn't necessarily his team. You know, took over at the end of March when when Bruce Arians retired and didn't necessarily get to make it staff, didn't have personnel necessarily the same way. So this is probably the first Bucks team that's really um, has his imprint on it, personnel-wise, coaching staff-wise. And, and I think that that's more indicative of what he wants this team to be. I think he's enjoyed this start. Um, you know, I think for three years here with Tom Brady, they had such high expectations. And I think they've relished people sleeping on them, people not expecting very much of them, and forgetting that a, a big part of this, of that Super Bowl team in 2020, was the defense that's still mostly back here right now. Hey, Greg, uh, there's a guy on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that myself and my audio engineer, Lucas, would love to have on the Detroit Lions. But I want to ask you, how's his headspace talking about Mike Evans? How is his headspace right now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and how is his health with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Because he's still a damn good wide receiver that I would love uh, seeing in the Honolulu Blue and Silver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a hamstring, so there's no okay. question mark. Has not practiced, did not practice yesterday or today. Um, Bowles said, you know, kind of Friday is the most important day in terms of trying to see what he can do. Mike's had a lot of hamstring issues over the years and has pushed through a lot. So uh, as long as there's not, you know, as long as they don't see a real risk of – uh, exacerbating that, making it a multi-week injury. I think he'll be there on Sunday. This is a game that means a lot to him. Um, a great defense to go up to. Having Mike Evans at receiver makes that a lot easier. He and Mayfield have connected really well. Three touchdowns in the first three games. Um, you know, Mike's a motivated guy this year because he's in the last year of his contract. Um, very much wants to stay here in Tampa, but if not, wants to show the rest of the league what they can still get from a guy who's got you know 84 career touchdowns, uh, 1,000 yards every year he's played in the league. Um, this is a big one for him, and I think, uh, honestly, this is the, the throwback game for the Bucks. This is the orange cream signal game for them on Sunday. Mike's a guy that, that you know, missed out on the, the last yeah. chance they had to have throwbacks in 2012 here, but I think he's excited to be out there in the orange for sure. Now, you know what this is for Mike Evans? It's, uh, it's an audition. 
It's an audition. That's all I'm saying. Oh, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Hey, uh, we're talking to Greg Gauman. Covers the Bucks in the NFC South for Fox Sports. On exit, Greg Gauman. I wanted to ask you about a guy we're very familiar with here in Detroit, and that's co-defensive coordinator Larry Foot. He has Foot. really gotten this defense. Uh, I, I mean, to be incredibly, uh, the ball hawks plus seven on the turnover margin. What is Larry Foot in that defense done there in Tampa? Because they are playing really, really good football. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely Todd Bowles' defense, but they're very comfortable with the two co-defense coordinators they have. Casey Rogers handles the front end. Larry Foot handles the back end. Larry's done a great job. They've had him with inside linebackers, with outside linebackers. A young guy, he's probably ready to be a coordinator on his own, a play caller himself. Uh, and yeah, they've been great. When you think about opportunistic ball hawking defenses, that's that's what a Larry Foot defense looks like. Greg, final question. When you look at the NFC South, you know, obviously the start from uh, Tampa Bay notwithstanding, uh, what do you make of, of this division right now? You've got three teams that have won three games, uh, New Orleans, Atlanta, and Tampa, and then you've got Carolina uh, there. This is, seems like it's going to be a dogfight to, to the finish here. Somebody's winning this thing. Yeah, it should be. I think they've been better than expected. Obviously, you know, the entire division didn't have a team with a winning record last year. So between that, between Brady retiring, uh, not the biggest names of quarterback across this division. Um, I think the expectations were low. Um, and again, I, I think defense is probably what's brought those teams to their success. I think all three of those are in the top 10 in total defense right now. Um, Atlanta's probably got a little bit more out of Desmond Redder than people had expected. Uh, Derek Carr just starting to click with, with New Orleans. And, you know, Carolina's probably another story at 0-5. But three teams, and it, it, you don't think of this as a division that could yield a wild card. Uh, but if they keep going, they'll be right there in the thick of it uh, come January. Uh, Greg, I got one last question, uh, and I think it's our last question, too, and it's about a player that I absolutely love. I played against his father, and Antoine Winfield. He was operating at such a high level when he came into the league. They won the Super Bowl, and I think he's still operating at a hell of a high level. I think he has 11 sacks in his career, which is insane, considering he's a corner. Talk about where he's at right now, because I know as he goes, so does that secondary. How's Antoine Winfield doing right now? Yeah, absolutely. Just, just an absolute leader. They just named him a captain for the first time this week. Uh, First time to be a team captain on this roster. Does a little bit of everything. They can blitz him a ton. Great in coverage. Um, you know, Anton Winfield. You think about four games in right now. He's another guy. We talked about Mike Evans being in the contract here. He's he's at the end of his rookie contract. Um, I think they very much want to keep him here in Tampa. He'll be a priority for them in terms of of young yeah. leaders. They want to stay in Tampa. He's going to get paid really well. Hell he's yeah, going to get got... paid uh, fifteen million dollars a year and more as one of the best young do-it-all versatile safeties in this league. Todd Bowles is an old safety himself, so I always think about the safeties in his defense are absolute weapons, and, and Antoine Winfield is a guy who's undersized but does everything, and, and it's a big part for when you think about the turnover margin, the takeaways, he, he leads that effort, both in, in forced fumbles, that game against the Saints really turned on Antoine Winfield, poking a ball out inside the five-yard line, the last minute of the first half to set up a touchdown. And it really changed the tone of the game. It separated yeah. those two teams. And, and that's what he does for this defense. All right, Greg, thanks Appreciate so much that, for yeah. the time, my friend. Enjoy the game on Sunday. Enjoy the weather there in Tampa. We're a little chilly here today in the Motor City. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Man, All right. Follow, follow Greg on X. Greg, at thank Greg you. Appreciate you. Gauman. Thanks so much. Greg Allman. Sorry. Uh, thanks so much. Uh,